Ah, uh, the 90s. With Space Jam 2 being an actual thing, it seems we finally hit the point in our culture where 90s nostalgia is in full force. It's lip puckering sour! What does the 90s mean to me? Well, it's the decade in which a baby faux retro was brought into this world. It's also the beginning of my love for video games. My earliest memory involves playing a Super Nintendo that only had Super Mario World and the Three Stooges to go with it. My big introduction to gaming, however, can be attributed to the point-and-click adventure games from Humongous Entertainment. Formed in 1992 by Ron Gilbert, famed for his work on Maniac Mansion and the early Monkey Island games in Shelley Day, Humongous Entertainment created computer edutainment titles in their junior adventure series, such as Putt-Putt, Pajama Sam, Freddy Fish, and Spy Fox. The company's name was even created by Tim Schafer. Soon, my sweet summer child. I loved these games. Loved them. Humongous games had really great art styles, looking like Saturday morning cartoons come to life with solid animation and pretty great voice acting. Each of these games hold a special place in my heart, but overall, the Spy Fox games were my favorite. Yay! Let me see that. A gentle parody of James Bond, the Spy Fox games follow our main character, whose name is actually Spy Fox, as he goes on globe-trotting adventures to foil the evil plots of his many arch nemeses. Overall, there were three Spy Fox games developed, along with two arcade games. Today we'll be talking about the very first game in the series, Spy Fox and Dry Serial. We start off learning that all of the dairy milk in the world has vanished, ruining obnoxious children who need to get a grip's breakfast everywhere. <laughs> the madman behind all this is one William the Kid, head of Nectar of the Gods, or Nog, Corporation, and captain of the Two-Toothed Laugh. <laughs> One snazzy transition later, and we meet up with Spy Fox. Somewhere over the Mediterranean Sea. A muttering flight attendant passes him his fancy super-secret in-flight meal that is actually a video screen call from Monkey Penny, who gives him his mission. Stop William the Kid from kidnapping all the dairy cows of the world and replacing all dairy with goat-based products. The first order of business is to save the kidnapped Howard Hugh Heffer Utterly III. <laughs> the head of Amalgamated Moo Juice Incorporated. The only clue is a pile of butter cheese and a picture of his big cow butt. We conveniently depart the airplane still in the sky and start the game. Spy Fox is super chill about falling from this airplane. Forgot his parachute in the other tuxedo, don't you know? Thankfully, he has a fishing pole in this set and lands safely on the Greek island of Acidophilus. The only resident around is this sailor and... Hey, wanna see my tattoo? Well, well, okay. We put in a secret code and we rendezvous with Penny in the Spy Corp Mobile Command Center where we get some money and a laser toothbrush. Don't put that in your mouth. The humor in Spy Fox is really well done. It trades mostly in puns, but there's some generally great physical comedy and timing to be had here. This being a point-and-click adventure game, you are encouraged to click on everything. Many clicks just trigger silly animations, but the best thing is the multiple conversations you can have with the characters. Just the stuff Spy Fox and Monkey Penny talk about here is pretty hilarious stuff that I think really goes above and beyond what was generally expected of a game made for children. You're going to be busy on this rescue mission. Should I call the Spy Academy and, and tell them to cancel the weapons class you're going to teach? What? You're going to tell them that Spy Fox doesn't have class? <laughs> They'll never believe you. It's just good, goofy writing that anyone of whatever age can really enjoy. We head down the dock to the Nog Feta Cheese Factory. We laser toothbrush our way in and find Hugh Heffer's, uh, Heffer. With some temperature adjustments to the pool filled with piranhas threatening him, we save utterly with some hilariously unnecessary acrobatics from Spy Fox and return him to the mobile command center. Utterly tells us about the events of his kidnapping and it's honestly perfect. There were dozens of them. I fought them hoof and nail. Pow, 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 I did. My whole body is a weapon. He also has figured out William's master plan, flooding the capital with milk and blame the dairy cows, putting them all in jail so he can take over the dairy industry. It's completely absurd, but perfectly in line with the irreverent yet kid-friendly style of the series. <laughs> Dr. Quack shows up and all the spy gadgets become available for us to add to our inventory. You can only have four at a time, but it's easy to return to the command center to exchange if you need to. Also, after Quack explains the gadgets, he eats the blueprints, and this made me really want to eat edible paper as a kid. Yeah. Our next objective is to now discover William the Kid's secret fortress. The island of Acidophilus opens up and we're free to explore it. There's the main plaza with this bunny trinket salesman along with... 
him. Wanna see my tattoo? The cantina, the dock, the boat SS Deadweight, which we can't get onto without an invitation, and a small boat with a captain missing his lucky charm. The small boat is significant because in some playthroughs of Dry Serial, he won't even show up. Humongous games always included separate versions of its story to encourage replayability, a great feature that adds good variety to a game that's really only two hours or so long. You never know exactly what you're going to get when you boot it up. By the way, you can watch me play through the other adventure on my Twitch. I'm just saying. <coughs> Follow me! The puzzles in Dry Serial are all about simple problem solving and logical thinking. Need to get on the captain's boat? You need to find his lucky charm that he lost in a game of Go Fish. To play Go Fish with this annoying pig, who knew I could get stressed by Go Fish, <sighs> you need to have some trinkets to trade which we buy from the salesman outside. Don't overthink it. Every problem has a simple solution and, if push comes to shove, just rely on the classic adventure game strategy of use every item on everything, click all of the things, and never stop. We eventually find our way down the boat where we meet Russian Blue, a suspicious feline who is the owner of the SS Deadweight. She's obviously evil, but in order to find out what we need to do, we have to ask her about the other party guests on the boat and the citizens of the island. This involves clicking on Spyfox's little talk bubble notepad in his inventory. Whenever you meet a person of interest or an object of importance, we can ask anyone around about them with unique answers with each character. It goes a long way to making the player really feel like you're a spy, investigating various animals of interest that always pays off with either plot progression and or a funny experience. Exchange. What do you know about Captain Drydock and his lucky charm? Oh, that was a night to remember. Elaborate, please. There's strategy and it's problem solving that can be hard to find in a children's game. So we move about the island, interacting with various characters and slowly discovering that there's a milk leak out in the Mediterranean Sea. With some puzzle solving and randomly acquiring a frock suit, we make it out to the ocean. Diving in and, after giving some random goons a wedgie, we rendezvous with informant Mata Harry. Congrats on somehow fitting in a drowned treasure chest. She gives us a device to access Kid's Lair. To get in though, we have to do this rewiring puzzle, which I struggled with way more than I should have. And we're in. It's here where the game diverges even more, depending on what path of the game you're playing. In my case, I have to cross this river of crocodiles by giving them a box of chicken knuckles covered in secret sauce. The implications are horrifying. We're then tasked with finding one of three different items to shut down William's milky weapon of destruction. We make use of some more of our gadgets while dealing with more goofy characters as Spy Fox makes his way around the base. Sorry, folks. I'm on a mission. You must be one dedicated accountant! This karate chicken from my Twitch playthrough was especially memorable. Once we've found the correct piece to stop the milky weapon of destruction, in my case a specific key, we've done it. <laughs> we find the dairy cows and free them and set off after Kid as he tries to escape in his blimp. Not the fastest moving vehicle, but eh, it's flashy. And guess what? We got an early quick time event on our hands. Whoa. Sort of. Uh. This game can end right here if you want. You can stop the villain's plan, but not catch them. Thankfully, I clicked the very slow moving object, ages five to 10, and we make it onto Kid's blimp as he's blissfully unaware of our presence. A few small puzzles later and we've done it. Kid lands violently in jail after a rather grotesque held close up of his uvula and Spy Fox is honored by Bull fucking Clinton for outstanding heroism and suaveness in the face of utter dairy chaos. This game came out in 1997 and that's Spy Fox and Dry Cereal. Not a long game by any means, but like most humongous entertainment games, it's designed to be played again and again with branching paths, different characters, and different gadgets to discover each time you play. As a kid, it obviously took me a lot longer to beat, but as an adult, it makes for a nice, mostly relaxing afternoon playthrough. Low stakes, funny characters, and universe, just all around a great time. It's a shame that Humongous kind of stopped developing adventure games in the early 2000s. A series of acquisitions led to employees leaving and being let go until there was no one there to develop anything other than for companies to hold license to the games. A few of them were ported to the Nintendo Wii, including Dry Serial, but due to licensing issues with the porters not giving the Scum engine developers proper credit, Nintendo quickly stopped selling them. Copies are still easy to find, however, and aren't expensive, so if you'd rather point and click with the TV destroyer that is the Wii Remote, knock yourself out. Humongous still exists today, by the way. They still aren't developing anything, but they do have merchandise and have released most of their games to Steam, iOS, and Android. I can just cross my fingers and hope that maybe some of these franchises can be revived so a new generation of kids can discover games made just for them that are stuffed to the brim with imagination, excitement, and fun. At least we'll always have the originals and nothing can be done to destroy their legacy. I think. Those Atari games weren't amazing.